Hey my friend, how are you? Welcome to Joey's Dynamic Programming Tutorial and gear up to watch an amazing problem from the world of dynamic programming. Maximum absolute sum of any subarray. I have made videos on maximum subarray and maximum product subarray already. It would be better if you first watched these videos and then resume from here. If you have already watched those videos, then understanding this problem from lead code won't be difficult for you. Let's check out its problem statement now. But before that, I humbly request you to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon next to it because that way you are not going to miss out on any videos I release in the future. An integer array is given to you. You need to find out the maximum absolute sum of any subarray from the given array. So absolute sum means that when the sum is negative, then absolute sum will be minus of sum and uh, when the sum is positive then the absolute sum will be simply positive of sum suppose if i j and k are the three elements of a subarray then note that the absolute sum will be absolute function of the addition of i j and k and not the sum of the absolute functions applied on i j and k individually now let's begin solving this problem using the bottom up approach. This is the problem array that you see on the screen. Beneath it, I have created two arrays max and min. The first array will store the maximum sum and the second array will store the minimum sum. Why we store the minimum sum? Because when we are going to apply the absolute function on the lowest value in this array, then it will yield the maximum sum. It can yield the maximum sum, I should rather say. I will populate the first cells of these two arrays with the first value from our problem array, which is 2. Now let's begin to fill the value in the second cell of the max array. Here, either the sub array that started from 2 will continue or a new sub array will start from minus 5. Hence, first let's add 2 and minus 5 as a result of which we get minus 3. When we compare minus 3 and minus 5, then which one is greater? Minus 3 obviously. So I populate minus 3 in this cell. Now let's calculate the value of the second cell of the min array. Here it will be either the sum of 2 and minus 5 which is minus 3 or minus 5 itself. Between minus 3 and minus 5, the minimum is minus 5. So I populate minus 5 in this cell. We move to the third cell now of the max array. First, we will add minus 3 with 1, which will yield minus 2. But between 1 and minus 2, which is maximum, 1 obviously, so I populate 1 in this cell. This also means that the old sub array ends and a new sub array starts from here. For the third cell of the min array, we have two choices. First is the addition of minus 5 and 1, which gives minus 4 as the value. And second is 1 itself. We will pick the minimum 1, so I populate minus 4 in this cell. Moving to the fourth cell of the max array, the first choice, which denotes the continuation of the previous array, will be the addition of 1 and minus 4. That gives me minus 3. And the second choice is minus 4 itself. Minus 3 is clearly the maximum. So I populate it in the fourth cell. For the fourth cell of the min array, the first candidate is addition of minus 4 and minus 4, which gives minus 8 as the answer. And the second candidate will be minus 4. The minimum between minus 8 and minus 4 is minus 8. So I populate minus 8 in this cell. Let's uh, remove the first rounder array a bit before we proceed to the next cell. So we move to the second last cell of the max array. Here the first choice will be the addition of minus 3 and 3. That will give me 0. And 0 will be compared with the second choice which is 3 itself. Which is maximum. 3 obviously, so I populate 3 in this cell. Coming over here, 
we have minus 8 and 3 as our first choice, first candidate, which is going to give me minus 5. So between minus 5 and the second choice, which is obviously 3, which is minimum, minus 5, obviously. So I put minus 5 over here. Okay, now we move to the last cell, last cell of the max array and the last cell of the min array. First candidate will be the addition of 3 and minus 2, which will give me 1. Between 1 and the second candidate, which is minus 2, obviously, which is maximum? 1, obviously. So I populate 1 in this cell. Coming to the last cell of the min array, the first candidate will be the addition of minus 5 and minus 2. That is going to give me minus 7. And the second candidate will be minus 2. So between minus 2 and minus 7, which is minimum? Minus 7, obviously. So I put minus 7 over here and I clear these values around our arrays for better visibility. Now we have both the arrays populated entirely. They hold the maximum and the minimum results of the overlapping subproblems. All we have to do is find the highest value from the max array and the lowest value from the min array. The highest value from the max array is 3 and the lowest value from min array is minus 8. As per our condition, we will apply the absolute function to both these values. So first candidate becomes 3 and the second candidate becomes 8. Between 8 and 3, which is maximum? 8 obviously. So 8 is the maximum absolute sum of any subarray from the given problem array. Observe that minus 5, 1 and minus 4 when added together gives the sum as minus 8 which was stored as a result of this subproblem. When absolute function was applied, it changed to 8 and thus emerged as the maximum sum. With this, we have come to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope you learned from this video. Do give this video a thumbs up. Let me know how to find this video in the comment section. Also, if you have any doubts, you are welcome to put them down in the comment section. I promise I'll answer them. I look so much forward to help you with programming and algorithms. Thank you and goodbye.